Let's write a Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide, SO2. In, in doing a skeleton for this, um, we've got two oxygens and one sulfur, so probably a good idea to put the sulfur in the middle and an oxygen on each side. How many electrons are we dealing with here? Sulfur has but valence electrons. Yeah, sulfur has six and oxygen has six and there's two sixes, so together 18. So we've got 18 valence electrons. So then let's start and we'll go, we need to have a, a bond between each, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Does everybody have an octet? No. We're, we're short a couple of electrons, right? So then what we do is we'll take a bonding pair, I'm sorry, a lone pair, away. Let's get rid of that bonding lone pair. Good grief. My brain isn't working. It's foggy. And, and stick it in there. And now we have an octet for everybody. Oxygen has eight. Sulfur has eight. There's two, four, six, eight. And this oxygen, two, four, six, eight. But this isn't, isn't super symmetrical, is it? It's not perfectly symmetrical because we've got a double bond on this side and a single bond on that side. Why is the double bond over there? Why isn't the double bond over there? Well, we could draw it that way, too. There's sulfur and oxygen and oxygen. And let's put the double bond over there and the single bond here. Now, those structures are very similar, but they're not exactly the same because here this oxygen has a double bond, this one has a single, and in this structure it's reversed. This oxygen has the double bond and that one has the single bond. These two structures are equally correct. But what is actually going on in the molecule? Well, we can study the molecule and its behavior and learn some things about it, and what we find is that neither one of them is correct. That this molecule actually does not have a single bond and a double bond. Experimentally, we can tell that this bond between the sulfur and the oxygen on the left, between the sulfur and the oxygen on the right, those two bonds are actually the same. And yet, in our Lewis structures, they're not the same. And so what, what is actually true is something in between these. And there's not a great way in, in Lewis theory to draw that, except to say, well, it's going back and forth between these two things. It's in between. What we actually have is like a one and a half bond between each sulfur and oxygen. And these are, these are called resonance structures. So on a, on a very simplistic level, we can think of it resonating back and forth between these, but what it is actually true is what is in the middle. It's, it's between those. There's not a good way to draw it with Lewis theory, and so we draw both of them in the double-headed arrow and say it's between those two. Either one would predict that we've got a double bond and a single bond, but we actually find that those bonds are identical and that they are, we can measure the strength of them and the length of them and they are intermediate between a double and a single bond. So this, this is what we do. We say these are resonant structures and the two, true structure is in between. Kind of said all that on the first slide. So let's write the Lewis structure for um, nitrite ion and include resonance structures. 
what we'll find is we can have resonance structures when we have a double bond and we have to choose which atom of the same element it goes with. So let's do this one. So NO2, that kind of looks like SO2, doesn't it? Let's put the uh, nitrogen in the middle and an oxygen on each side. Nitrogen has how many valence electrons? Nitrogen, five. And oxygens each have six. So five and twelve. Oh, and then there's the charge. We need to add one in here. So that's 18, right? 18 electrons. I'm going to do it as, um, well, no, I'll just stay with the dots. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. There's, we're short, aren't we? Nitrogen does not have an octet. So that means we need to share more. So one of these oxygens needs to share a pair of electrons with the nitrogen in order for everybody to be happy. So let's make the guy on the left share this time. No, well, yeah. And then we need to indicate that this has a charge. So here we have nitrogen with an octet, oxygen with an octet, this oxygen with an octet. But we see the nitrogen is bonded to two oxygens. One has a double bond, one has a single bond. That's our clue that there's a resonance structure. In Instead of just having the double bond over here, there's also the possibility that we could give the double bond to the other oxygen. And so then we're just going to write the same formula, the same structure, but give the double bond to the other oxygen. And it can happen if you have more than two on the, um, like if you had three oxygens, you could end up with three resonance structures. Try to make this look as much like the other one as possible. And then to indicate that these are resonance structures, we, we make a double-headed arrow in between. Any questions?